Hey guys, and welcome into another Buffy reaction. Today we are going to be watching season two, episodes seven and eight, which are titled Lie to Me and The Dark Age, which are pretty ominous titles compared to what we've had in the past. So I don't know what to expect from these episodes, but as always, I am so excited to get into it. The last two episodes that we watched were so good. We had Reptile Boy, which was about that fraternity that was like a lizard cult and sacrificing girls to their lizard master. And then we had Halloween, which was just a fun Halloween special, but then also it introduced a new character. What's his name? Ethan, um, which I assume is going to be returning because he knows Giles, called Giles Ripper. And that was like, excuse me. We also got some Drew and Spike out of that episode. And then there were some really interesting themes in the episode that actually sparked a conversation in the comments that I wanted to talk about. I saw some comments that I screenshotted and I'm going to respond to um, to open up the conversation as more of a back and forth type of thing. This is something that I've been considering doing since the beginning of season two. I was considering starting it from episode one and I think I mentioned the idea in my um, in my season one like review video where um, I go in the comments and end up picking a few that I respond to and talk about at the beginning of the next episode to continue on the conversation from the previous episodes just to have some more back and forth discourse going on. So that is what I'm going to do today kind of on a heavy topic not super heavy nothing crazy but heavy enough it doesn't always have to be like super like thought provoking thematic questions that need to be written out for me to respond to it but this is just one of those times where I'm like oh I want to talk about this and I love that you guys put these comments down because I think it's cool that we can talk about this together so yeah let me know if me responding to comments and opening up that conversation a bit more is something that you're a fan of or if you would rather me keep my nose out of it and just react to the episodes let me know um kindly what you would prefer <laughs> oh this one let me read this one learn how to get out of your comfort zone develop your character make it solid and stronger the world is huge don't hide in the corner willow was amazing in that outfit jaw dropping agreed um she should know that she is capable of that too it's always good to get more confidence we'll help you in the future so we should encourage her and support her during the process since she will be a stunning queen so it's sad for me to see how you react to that so when willow came out in her costume my brain immediately went to the episode uh inca mummy girl where willow was seeing empata and she used the words like dressing sexy and she was clearly thinking it over like oh do i need to dress sexy for people to notice me um and i that's that's what i was worried about i was worried about a 16 year old girl thinking that she has to dress a certain way in order for people to like her more because of that tiny seed sprouting in Inca mummy girl and because when she got that ghost costume in the store she seemed really excited about it and I think that there's nothing wrong with like wanting to wear a funny costume over a sexy costume also she's 16 years old and I don't want her to think she has to dress a certain way in order to get attention that's what I was afraid of I don't think that confidence and dressing sexy are synonymous in any type of way I think they're completely separate things and they can go together or not go together but it it became clear to me as the show went on that the outfit was just a metaphor for her own self-confidence. She didn't end up wearing the outfit in the end because it got her attention. And in fact, she did get attention at the end of the episode from Oz, um, even though it wasn't just because of the outfit. We know that he just likes her in general. But she did get attention in the end and she didn't even notice. She was just kept walking and she was in her own world and she was happy and confident on her own. She spent the whole episode really coming into her own, taking charge because she was one of the few people whose costumes didn't affect her mentally. In the end, that self-confidence that she gained by taking charge of a situation is what allowed her to in turn wear the dress wear the metaphor proudly you know so I think the show did a really great job with this episode I think that it could have sent a really terrible message if it wanted to and it didn't at all and I'm here for Willow gaining self-confidence whether that means she's going to change her style or she's going to rock out as a ghost next year this one says all three of them were feeling insecure not just Xander I take your point about needing to grow out of it but all of them need to grow out of their insecurities and this show has a lot of themes of adolescence so it makes sense yeah, I remember saying something about how Xander was very easily emasculated in that cafeteria which actually there was another um um, these two comments actually go well together, so I want to read off this other comment as well. I don't think Xander was being directly insecure about his own masculinity when Buffy saved him. The reason he was upset was that if other people knew a girl had saved him, he would be bullied more by them because he would be seen as weaker or less 
masculine. He definitely had growing to do at this point, and I'm not saying that's a great point on his favor, but when you see that he's worried about being bullied moving forward, then he is about the fact that Buffy saved him. It's not quite as bad. It's that he's worried about the results for him due to other people's sexism, not that he is upset for himself due to his own sexism. Not great, but definitely not as bad as if he truly was upset to be saved by a girl. He doesn't really get upset on many occasions where he saves his life. She saves his life. This is so true. And that's a great point as well as to how Xander's masculinity was explored in that episode. He has been saved by Buffy so many times and he's never put up a fuss about it, clearly like he's grateful and he, he thinks she's great but uh, it's different when it's like a guy his it's a peer and um he felt like he needed to be the one to take care of it and i think that you're right in assuming that it's not because he doesn't want to be you know saved by a girl it's more because he doesn't want someone else to judge him for being saved by a girl which is a problem in and of itself but it's just a problem of the time and an insecurity of that age that yeah i absolutely think is something that is cool to be addressed in the show but back to this comment as well about all three of them feeling insecure you saying that you know their insecurities and the show has a lot of themes of adolescence so it makes sense yeah and i don't think that it's something that when i must have said something like xander needs to like grow did i say xander needs to grow out of it i don't know if i said something about that meant like grow out of it over the coming years not like immediately it's it's something that i i understand is like a tough thing for um an adolescent guy to go through especially in the 90s where you know you have to come to terms with what masculinity means to you and and figure it out in a healthy manner so so i think that the, it's really cool that the show is exploring that and yeah i absolutely am excited to see more of it and you pointed out all three of them were feeling insecure and yes i did clock buffy's insecurity about the girls that angel grew up with when he was younger you know the the 19th 18th century um women in their poofy dresses all very feminine and that is another thing that you guys pointed out in the comments where it's not just masculinity it's also femininity that was explored in this which i gathered like insecurity adolescent insecurity was a major theme of that episode with all three of them but it was thanks to you guys that i realized um how there was an emphasis on femininity as well i think another really cool thing that this show did in this last episode was it explored old school femininity and Buffy kind of had a yearning for it at the beginning of the episode because she is not the typical feminine woman according to olden times and I think by the end of the episode she realized that that is okay and she embraced like the modern femininity that she is. I also just want to say I saw a couple comments of people like upset about certain things that I cut from my reaction. I don't know what scenes like fans are most excited to see from me like I don't know what moments um people are excited to see so there's nothing i can really do about that if i cut it out it's probably because my reaction to it was like not <laughs> that interesting to me and i only have so many minutes of the episode to include in the reaction and so if like other aspects of the reaction mesh better together and something ends up getting cut it just is the way that it is i just wanted to let you guys know that i'm really 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 enjoying watching this show with you guys and it can be a little bit intimidating when i know that there's so many diehard fans in this fandom i'm sorry if i don't always react um a certain way and i'm sorry if sometimes things have to sit with me or I, it doesn't click right away and it's not until the end of the episode or a couple episodes later where something clicks in my brain and it's too late to include in like the edited reaction. It's hard doing reactions sometimes and getting everything across that you want to um, because it's in the moment. Going back and doing a review of TV shows is probably um, a better way to pick up on everything but I'm doing the best I can. I really just want to enjoy the show with you guys. I just want to put out like a reminder to be kind to each other and please like to me in the comments. I just saw some stuff brewing in the comments on the last video, a video that I was like really excited about and episodes that I was really excited about where I was like, oh man. And obviously to all the silent watchers and all the kind commenters, thank you so much. And if I, I, the comments that I just read out, I, I don't think are mean comments. That's not the comments I'm talking about. Like you guys are great, even if it was a dis disagreement with me in like a really nice way. So I appreciate that. So with that being said, if you would like to watch along with the full episodes, my uncut reactions are available below on my Patreon. I also post bonus content over there and it's a great way to support the channel if you would like to, but if not, let's get into my edited reactions here on YouTube. All right, hopefully I'm not as pause happy this this episode because it got a little excessive. I noticed in editing on my last two episodes. I love a creepy playground moment. I'm not gonna... Oh, mom. She's late. Are you lost? No. My mom's just. Oh my god, I thought she was his mom for a second. So that's just. 
run home. <sighs> Thank God. That poor kid. Where is his mother? What kind of mom leaves their kid out at dark in a park by themselves? My. Oh, uh, Do you remember the song Mommy used to sing me? I remember. Sister? Yes, you do. Drusilla, leave here. I'm offering you that chance. Poor little thing. She has no idea what's in store. That looks bad. This can't go on, Drusilla. It's gotta end. Oh no, my pet. This is just the beginning. Okay, not sister, not sister. Dear God, I hope. <sighs> Well, first of all, I wanted to say I love, again, we're like deepening the character web, like the webs keep intertwining. I love that so much. So I think it's really cool. It's really fun that that Drusella and Angel know each other and have a history as well, because that just makes for in more interesting characters and possibilities. I thought for a second that they were siblings because she said mom used to sing to me or something and instead of saying my mom. So I was like, mom, like shared mom, but then she called him her pet, I think, so I'm gonna scratch that one off the the list of ideas. It seems like they've they've been like together together, and then he was like, "This must end what so how what's been going on? okay, tomorrow night seven thirty right They're not gonna have a normal date. We know something crazy's gonna happen. I can't think she hasn't she hasn't seen Drusella, has she? She worked really hard to look that good, and people just don't appreciate that kind of effort. And I know the peasants were all depressed. I didn't even think about that, that she doesn't even know Drusella. I forget sometimes that the things I know that some of the characters don't. And, and Marie Antoinette cared about them. She was going to let them have cake. Come she on. was going to let them have cake. <laughs> Does she? Know. She doesn't even know she's a vampire. So. Oh my God. They seem pretty friendly. Oh, you just need cheering up. And I know just the thing. Bronze. Crazy dance party at the bronze. <laughs> I'd suggest a box of Oreos dunked in apple juice, but maybe she's over that phase. Ford? Hey, Summers. How you been? Oh, An old hi, friend? What are you doing here? I moped over you for months. Sitting in my room listening to that divinal song, I touched myself. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I had no idea what it was about. Yeah. No, it's so funny. There's so many songs, like, when you're a kid that you have no idea what they mean. And it's so funny, like, listening to them when you're older and being like... This was my favorite song when I was three. Like, my favorite song, literally when I was three years old, was Hot in Here by Nelly. And my mom would have to remind me before dropping me off to go to daycare, like, don't sing that at daycare. <laughs> this is Ford, my bestest friend of all my friends. <laughs> Jeez, doesn't she know any fat guys? Oh, Rude. that's what that song is about. <laughs> that that's my mom. I'm going to out my mom right now. I'm going to out my mom <laughs> right now. You guys know the song, um, Can't Feel My Face by The Weeknd. And I can't feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. You know that song. Um, it's about like drugs. <laughs> and my mom thought, <laughs> my mom is so cute. She thought um, it was, he couldn't feel his face because he smiled so much when he was with this person that he was singing about. <sighs> Love her. You can't touch me, Summers. I know all your darkest secrets. Care to make a small wager? Does on he that? know that she doesn't? Go yeah, right. Same Xander. Does he know that she's the Slayer? Probably not. Unless it's gonna be like a twisty thing, and he ends up being a villain. I was hoping you'd show. That's Angel. He's Buffy's beau. He's not in school, right? He looks older than her. You're not wrong. Talk what about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Nothing. Oh, I hate this. Nothing I hate all. when this happens. You cease to exist. You know, I can't be actually mad at her because she's like a teenager. But this is more of an annoyance that I have with like TV tropes. And it's always a thing in TV dramas because we're here for the drama, right? This is the drama. Is when they don't just like go like, hey, I saw you with a girl last night. Can you tell me who she was? What happened? What, what was going on there? Like just say what you saw and be open to hearing the explanation. And I know I can see the the I can see how it's going already. She's going to dance around it and he's going to act like it's nothing because to him it probably is nothing and to, it's nothing for her to worry about. And so then she's going to think that it's worse than it is. Oh, man. Ah, miscommunication is my biggest People thing. Want that oh. soda after all. It's getting really crowded in here tonight. Um, I'm a little hot. You want to take a walk? Um, sure. Mm. That'd be nice. So what else do you do for fun around here? Um, well, my purse. 
<laughs> I, I left my purse at the bronze. Okay, so he is suspicious. Oh, it came flying. What's going on? <laughs> um, uh, there was a, a cat. I know you're the slayer. Okay. Just like that, he told you? Said he found that right before I got booted from Henry. Wow. It's neat. Is it neat? It's been yeah, so I long. It. If I found out that, well, I wonder if he believed in the supernatural before then even, but if I found out that my friend was the vampire slayer and then they moved, I'd track down a phone number for sure. <laughs> I would be trying to get a hold of them and being like, oh my God, what's going on? But okay, I don't know. I don't know if I'm suspicious or not of him. It's like the fact that he came right out with it and was like, hey, I know. Um, that, I guess, makes me less suspicious, but, you know, he's a new person randomly showing up. It's a TV drama where there's twists and turns all the time. I can't trust the guy yet. Oh, God. Oh, no. Now what? I'm trusting you. I'm out on a limb here. Not to mention the lease is almost up on this place. Who's going to cover that? Marvin. Diego. It's Diego now. Diego. <laughs> Ritalin. Just make sure you're ready when I say. True believers only. A couple more days and we'll get to do the two things every American teen should have the chance to do. Die young and stay pretty. He wants to be a vampire. Oh. All of them do. That's crazy. This is really interesting. This is really interesting because I grew up in the age of vampires. <laughs> that included the Vampire Diaries and Twilight. And like everyone wanted to be a vampire because like... Those vampires in those universes were like, it seemed fun <laughs> outside of having to like drink blood, okay? But you know what I mean? Like they're, they're glamorized and romanticized. And this show hasn't really gone there. I don't think it ever fully will. Like I think it's at the heart of it. It's like we know that, you know, this is an offspring of demon and vampires get their souls sucked out of them. So like they become terrible horrible people, people, monsters, I should say. It's so interesting to me that there is still this group of people within this universe that have decided to romanticize vampires, even though, despite all of that, but despite all of the many problematic things, like, of course. Oh, man. Well, Ford, I think he might die soon, but I don't know if he'll be coming back a vampire. That'd be crazy. What if he did? I don't know. I can't tell if he's going to be um, with us for long. A rare willow at home scene. Oh, Angel, Angel, what are you doing here? I want you to track someone down on the net. The oh. net? I just want to find everything I can. Records, Ford. affiliates. Billy I'm not Ford. I'm sure what I'm looking for yet. Great, what's the name? Billy Fordham. Are you going to tell me that I'm jealous? Well, you do sometimes get that way. hundred years, just hanging out, feeling guilty. I really honed my brooding skills. <laughs> I get jealous. But I know people, and my gut tells me this is a wrong guy. That's really interesting what he just said, actually, because he said 100 years feeling guilty, like 100 years since he had his soul restored, right? And he's had to, like, feel the weight of what he is. And then he's making it sound like this is the first girl he's had feelings for. After being young and pretty for a 100 years and, like, having the ability to care, this is the first time that he actually does care. I'm just so interested in that. Like, why? Why her? There's others. There's been other slayers. He's been around for other slayers. I think that's interesting that he feels that way. And I wonder if it just is what it is or if there's a reason, more of a reason. I just checked the school records and he's not in them. He's not even registered. He said he was in school with you guys, right? Let me just see if I can... Willow? Are you I still go. up? Don't tell Buffy what we're doing, all right? You want me to lie to her? It's Buffy. Just don't bring it up till we know what's what. Are we going to see your mom? Still no face? No actress yet? All right. I'm going to do work in the computer lab on schoolwork that I have, so I cannot hang just now. <laughs> it makes me jumpy. I have to go away. <laughs> She's so precious. Is that more vampires? Why would you think that? The weather. <laughs>
<laughs> They're just people running. They could just be regular sketchy people, but... Stay close to me. What? No, 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 no. Why did he say that? Is this a trap? Or am I just too suspicious now? Why would he say, are those more vampires? They're just people running. Is this a trap? Like, they, he knows them and they're leading them somewhere? Tell me what I want to know when I let you go. Oh. I, I killed her and she just turned to dust. It was amazing. Do we think he actually killed her? That's like a really short amount of time to get the information you need. Unless, I don't know, unless I'm being too nitpicky with like TV time. But I don't think that the vampire would like agree to like meet him. Maybe. If the vampire agreed to like, no, because they don't, I don't think vampires would barter like that. But maybe she agreed to like meet him and give him every, tell him everything that he wants to know if he spared her. I don't know. Boy, we blend right in. No I prefer the bronze over signs. the broods. Let's look around. Are you probably noticing a theme here? Uh huh. As in vampires, yay? <laughs> That's the one. We usually call them the nasty, pointy, bitey ones. So many people have that misconception, but they who walk with the night are not interested in harming anyone. <laughs> These people don't know anything about vampires. What they are, how they live, how they dress. <laughs> You took him to monster trucks? I thought it would be a change. It was a change. <laughs> we could have just left. He did bag a vamp his first time out. Gotta give him credit for that. No, you gotta be a little sussed about Something Drusella. wrong? Some of my newer volumes may be more helpful. Uh, my own research has... <gasps> Is that the vampire from that night? What in a the world? Book. It took one of my books. <gasps> it oh, is. Someone? You're so dumb. You could have just asked Buffy if you could read up on a book. You left it in a cage and you didn't feed it and now it's all dead, just like the last one. <laughs> I would totally live here. Do I have anyone on watch here? Uh, he just security, walked up in people. here. Are you all asleep? <laughs> I came looking for you, Spike. You. He's looking for Spike Deathwish. specifically. I want to be like you. A vampire. I've known you for two minutes and I can't stand you. I don't really feature you living forever. Can I eat him now, love? I'm offering you a trade. The you slayer. make me a vampire. And I'll give you the slayer. What is that noise that Drew keeps making? She's like purring like deep in her throat. And it's very odd. Also, just seeing like Spike and Drew interact again, it reminded me of something that I really quickly want to say. I said something about like, I'm interested in how they're together because I know that when you're a vampire, like you don't have feelings and stuff. And I don't understand like how they've managed such a long term relationship where they seem to actually care about each other. Um, and then someone in the comments, when I mentioned that, pointed out that Remember Darla? Like, Darla and Angel had a thing going on briefly. But I assumed that there wasn't any real affection and love in that because, you know, they were soulless vampires, the both of them. These two are soulless vampires, I think. So, like, I understand that you can be in a relationship and have, like, a buddy, like, a travel buddy, I guess. But as far as, like, true, like, love and affection and care, I didn't think that that could happen and it seems to me like something that resembles those emotions is happening between them maybe i'm reading them wrong and they like they don't actually care but i feel like if one of them was killed they would like avenge the death and be devastated and everything and i just didn't know that i didn't know that vampires could feel that for other vampires unless they had their emotions and souls given back to them anyways just putting that out there but that's where my thought process is with all that right now we need to talk do we uh friend forward it's not what he seems. We found this address, we checked it out with Xander, and it turned out- And Xander? It's like a great big exciting conspiracy. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the people I trust. Who's Drusilla? I did a lot of unconscionable things when I became a vampire. Come on, open Drusilla up. Drusilla was the worst. She was an obsession of mine. She was pure, and sweet, and chaste. And you made her a vampire. First I made her insane. Killed everybody she loved. 
visited every mental torture on her I could devise. She eventually fled to a convent. And on the day she took her holy orders, I turned her into a demon. Wow. I, it's hard to hear. It is hard to hear. But it's like during the time when he was like evil vampire mode before he got his soul, right? So I feel like I it would be hard to hear, but it wouldn't change my opinion of who he is now i guess it's also like one thing to hear it but then also like to see the victim of what he did and like know her and see what she's doing now and what her life has come to or life has come to yikes i had a great time last night well an interesting time i'm glad i sort of had an idea it's uh it's a secret i kind of want to surprise you sure at nine at nine. I love the camera work and the creepy music in the background of that conversation as he's all like none the wiser to what she knows. We didn't want to say anything in case we were wrong. Did you find out what Ford is up to? I will. Oh man. We were just trying to protect you. Angel is in your bedroom? <laughs> Ours is a forbidden love. <laughs> <laughs> I love Willow so much. I get why she's like having a hard time with them going behind her back even to protect her at this certain time when like sh her trust in a lot of people is is shaky. Um, it just feels like a lot I think in the moment with other things that are going on. I need them to bless me. It's gonna be fine. No, it's really not. Ooh. Yeah, well I still feel awfully chatty. You were gonna give them me. Yes. I don't know. I'd figure it out. Actually, I was counting on it. They're here. Rigged up special. Aww. Once it's closed, it can only be opened from the outside. This is the end, Buffy. No one gets out of here alive. At least let the other people go. Why are you fighting this? It's what we want. It's our <laughs> chance for immortality. This is a beautiful day. Can't you see that? You're what we call the bad guy. I guess I am. These people aren't going to get changed, are they? The rest of them, they're just fodder. Technically, yes. <laughs> Ford, these people don't deserve to die. Well, neither do I. But apparently no one took that into consideration because I'm still dying. I look good, don't I? Oh. What? Well, let me tell you something. I got maybe six months left, and by then, what they bury won't even look like me. It'll be bald and shriveled and... It'll smell bad. Okay. This kind of makes sense. Okay, so first, it's crazy that he's ready to kill all of these people and friends of his. And when he said before that he was like, no, I'm for sure they'll change you guys too. I thought he was like really just that hopeful and stupid. Then you find out, you know, he actually doesn't care about them and he's willing to sacrifice all of them just so that he can be immortal. And then you're going to hit me with cancer. I don't know like that makes that that makes it a lot more difficult to hate him because if you're dying actively and you've got six months left I don't know what I would think and what I would do um and if this kind of opportunity came up maybe I would be desperate especially when you're that young maybe I would be desperate like he is I don't know that's really tough he has to understand like you don't you you're dying like your true self is is dying either way like you don't you're not still you when you become a vampire like i don't know if he totally gets that i think he's just so desperate that he wants to grasp at any straws that allow him to live and this is what it's come to oh that's tough i had no idea but what you're doing is still very wrong you know what summers i really did miss you this is not the mothership people. This is ugly death come to play. Oh my god. Here we go. Take them all. Save the slayer for me. Spike! Ooh, he cares, right? Everybody stop! Let them go. Oh, yeah, cuz okay cool. Where is oh hi Okay, but where's Ford are there vampires? They're contained. They'll 
get out eventually though we should probably go whoa 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 we can come back when they're gone what they're contained you have the upper hand don't you want to kill them they're the bad guys i mean i don't want them to die because i have so much fun watching spike and now drew especially with her ties to angel and all that but it's an interesting choice what about my reward They're not going to tell us. Okay. Is he gone? Oh my god, is he gone? Did they actually turn him? No way. I mean, I believe it, but... It'd be simpler if I could just hate him. I think he wanted me to. I think it made it easier for him to be the villain of the piece. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly trying to work it out. Who to love or hate. Who to trust. It's just like, the more I know, the more confused I get. I believe that's called growing up. Mm. I'd like to stop then, okay? Mm-hmm. I know the feeling. Does it get easy? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Lie to me. Oh, man. Yes, it's terribly simple. No one ever dies, and... Everybody lives happily ever after. Liar. That was a traumatic ending. He came, he, so he did get turned. So he did get turned into, they turned him into a vampire and then she just killed him right away. I mean, you got to. But, wow. And that's a really cute ending. Lie to me. I was wondering how the, the title was going to tie into the overall episode. And when Buffy and Angel were talking, she said, don't lie to me. And he said, sometimes... Um, the truth is worse. And I was like, oh, is that how this is going to tie in? But I like that it even comes down to the end of the episode where it changes from Buffy saying to Angel, don't lie to me. And then her saying to Giles, lie to me. Um, because she's just so overwhelmed by the complications and the the gray area that is life. Wow, that's a really, really cool episode. I These... The last three episodes have been bangers, to be honest. We have Billy Ford, who we no longer have. And I think it was also cool that we introduced Billy Ford as her childhood best friend. They weren't really best friends, but like childhood friends. So it was someone from Buffy's past that was introduced. And then we also found out that Drusella and Angel had a history, which is a much more grim history than Ford and, and Buffy's. But it was cool that we kind of had both of them confront people of their past. I talked about like how crazy it is. Oh, do you know what this... I guess it was kind of like a cult somewhat. They were kind of culty. I guess like the 90s were really into cults. You want to know what? I want to look in because of like the Fraternity House episode. And then also this episode was a bit cultish with like all these people obsessed with vampires, especially their, their phrasing of wanting to... Um, reach a higher level of consciousness or something like they were all ready to basically <sighs> this reminds me so much they were ready to like commit mass suicide in a sense all together in becoming vampires believing that they wouldn't really die they would become immortal and their souls would live on and this storyline reminds me so much of something and i can't remember heaven's gate heaven's gate it was a um dubbed the ufo cult and i believe i need to look up when that mass suicide happened um, I think it was in the 90s. Oh my gosh, it happened. It happened in 1997, in March of 1997. So um, the spring before this episode came out, the same year that this episode came out. So I feel like this storyline for sure was calling out some parallels and referencing Heaven's Gate, the UFO cult. If you don't know, um, Heaven's Gate was, uh, it's actually categorized on Wikipedia as a religious movement, like a religion over a cult. It lasted for decades and these people basically believed that they were going to, and that's another thing that made me think of it because Buffy was like, this isn't the mothership when she was talking to all of them. It's been characterized as a UFO religion. The central belief of the group was that the followers could transform themselves into immortal extraterrestrial beings by rejecting their human nature and they would ascend to heaven, referred to the next level or the evolutionary level above human. This episode was definitely a reference. So yeah, I thought this was a great episode. We dug a little bit deeper into Buffy and Angel's relationship as we've been doing. This one was a bit of a setback, but I think maybe in the long run it could be a step forward because he's opening up a bit more and maybe she will learn to trust him a bit more as he does so. Calendar taking Giles on a monster truck date? Hey, you do you. It's something he'll never forget, but I really hope that they can... They were like interrupted by um Buffy, which obviously like 
it needed to happen and it's not Buffy's fault or anything that she had to interrupt the date. But I do really hope that one of these days they get to be on a date and be in the moment fully with each other and not get torn away. And I'd love to be there to see it too. I'm, I'm all in for them. I think they're cute. But yeah, I'm going to end it there for this episode. And next up, we have, what's the next one called? The Dark Age. Hold on. I want to look up what the Dark Ages is a specific time period. And is the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages the same thing? Oh, okay. So the Dark Ages is a term for the early Middle Ages or occasionally the entire Middle Ages in Western Europe after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. I forget the years though. Yeah, Dark Ages is way before Angel's time. I was just thinking like, oh, I wonder if we're ever going to That would actually be so cool if we got flashbacks of Angel. Maybe that's what his own show is for. Maybe they show more like flashbacks in that. I don't know. Maybe it's even a prequel show. I don't know. But um, Dark Ages is before his time. So I don't know what we're going to see in this episode. Rupert Giles. I need to see him. Mr. Giles. He's our librarian. Next building over. First door on your left. Another man from Giles's past? Or is it just someone who knows of him and, like, needs him for to help them? Oh, God. Deirdre? Philip. Help! Oh, uh, <laughs> that girl looks more zombie than vampire. And she's help! slow, too. She moves like a zombie. That's a- is that a zombie? And the rest is silence. Oh, my God. in the world i don't even know <laughs> i don't even know what just happened what was that that was not a vampire okay she looked like a zombie to me and i don't think we've really seen have we no i don't think we've really seen zombies in this show the closest we've come to it is like the frankenstein-esque episode but that's not exactly frankenstein isn't exactly a zombie but what was that goo Oh my god. Those are some intense nightmares. Also, this is so weird. This is, that was our first time seeing the inside of his house. <laughs> I'm in Florence, Italy. I've rented a scooter that's parked outside. I'm in a little restaurant eating ziti. So they have to see this guy with me, and it's John Cusack. I don't know who that is. What are you two up to? Just having a quick game of Anywhere But Here. Do you think Giles ever played Anywhere But Here when he was in school? Giles lived for school. He's actually still bitter that there are only 12 grades. Wait, I want you guys to play it. What's your Anywhere But Here scenario? I don't know what my... Oh, actually, mine comes to me immediately. Okay, Anywhere But Here. The dream is... I am in this big, cozy library with a big fireplace... And it's raining, thunderstorming outside, and I have all of the books in the entire world at my fingertips to just read cozily in a blanket by the fireplace with the storm in a big, like, cascading window in front of me. And my puppy, my puppy is with me too. And she's being quiet and letting me read. <laughs> so what's on tap tonight that's so important? Uprising, prophesied ritual, preordained death vessel? Her medical transport is delivering a monthly supply of blood to the hospital. Mm, vampire uh, meals on wheels. Yeah. Oh, hello, Miss uh, 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 Jenny. Feel the passion, mm -hmm. Willow. <coughs> Coughing, not speaking. Walk me to class. Pleasure. <laughs> Look at them. A twosome of cuteness. Can't you just imagine them getting together? <laughs> oh, thank you so much for um, one sec. I was so baffled by the opening scene where the zombie girl turned into goo that I just am now realizing that she killed someone who she was from who she knew, or at least he knew her. She suffocated them and then turned into goo. Do those things coincide? Like, what if this is an in no? My immediate theory is like, what if it's an infection of some sort? No, but then how would it get passed on unless he? <gasps> Okay, here's my theory. It's an infection of some sort. I don't know how it starts, but they turn into this zombie type thing and then they have to kill someone before they turn into goo. And then once they kill that person, that person then turns into a zombie and then they have to kill someone and they turn into goo and it's like this chain reaction. I don't know. I don't know how that would tie into like the blood uh, being delivered to the hospital. That scream is like vampire episode to me. So I don't know. 
Me the Forrester book. It's wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was so romantic, so provocative. So finally, I just I just started underlining all the pages I really wanted to discuss. Uh, uh, oh, underline. of course, I spilled coffee all over, <gasps> and I can't even read it. Is she for real? It's a first edition. I'm lying, Rupert. Oh, I just love to see you squirm. You can't. You cannot play with uh, me like that. Oh my God. Good squirm. This weekend. Would you like to go out? No, I think I'd like to stay in. <laughs> they better not get interrupted. They better get their time together this weekend. Let's see if I can make you squirm. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate though, I hate like the planning, the planning it, the planning it. Ugh. But I'm excited for them. Rupert Giles? Uh Yes. Detective Winslow. You're gonna have to come with me. There was a homicide on campus last night. The victim had no identification, but he was carrying this slip of paper with your name and address on it. His name's Philip Henry. He's a friend of mine in London. I haven't spoken to him in 20 years. Do you know what that is? The tattoo. No, I don't. Okay, so he definitely does. I'm guessing that our bestie Philip knew about the supernatural for a while and maybe they both knew about it together in London. When do doctors take deliveries? They're vampires. <laughs> I just will never tire of seeing her fight. It's so fun and satisfying. Angel! Buffy! Look out! Okay, we saved the blood. You know about this? It's delivery day. Everybody knows about this. I'm worried about Giles. He was supposed to meet me here. Yeah, maybe he's late. Giles? <laughs> Who counts tardiness as like the eighth deadly sin? Mm hmm. So, uh, I, I'm trying to reach Deirdre Page. My name is Rupert Giles. That I, was the girl. It's, it's, it's very important. I have no idea what. This episode is gonna turn in. That's. Okay. Oh, God. I'm, st I'm saying oh god to like the the liquor it's not bad to like drink <laughs> i don't think but it, in a in a drama i'm always scared when i see ethan <gasps> wait <gasps> okay hold on <laughs> I, I always get nervous when i see people drinking like this when they're stressed out in a in a drama because i'm like oh my god don't turn them into an alcoholic <sighs> so that <sighs> so i wonder if this okay so we have thomas oh my gosh do i did we know a Thomas ever? Philip and Deidre and Ethan, we've all met. Um, Philip and Deidre are now dead. Ethan is still out there. Obviously, we Rupert Giles is our bestie. Thomas said something. I just want to do a quick look. Usually, I write down names. And I want to do a quick look back. But I think we would have... Maybe they just added an extra name to like show that, you know, there was... The group was bigger than just what we've met. But I wonder if they must have been in some sort of group together. I think it was probably more than a, just a friend group given the circumstances of what's happening now and how they're all involved in the supernatural world, it seems. So maybe they were in some sort of group together in London and that tattoo that, that uh, Philip had was a tattoo that all five of them got together to like symbolize something and now that i think about it i don't know if i've ever seen rupert's or giles <laughs> i see his name right there so i just called him rupert but no giles i don't think i've ever seen giles in short sleeves i must have i wonder if he had the tattoo and he got it removed or if he actually does still have the tattoo and we just don't know it but yeah, that tattoo, my theory is that they were in some sort of group and they all got the same tattoo together. Interesting. And I love that we're weaving Ethan into something new, even though he's not really in the episode, but he's mentioned here. This is really cool. He does. <gasps> he does have the tattoo. So, you're back. Ripper? What? Why are we... Is he not really dead? Oh 
Okay, but Deidre's dead dead, right? Because we saw her turn into goo. So now he's zombie? And is he gonna turn into goo? Is Giles a zombie? If all of his other friends with tattoos are turning into zombies? What's going on? He's not a zombie. Let me see. I wanna see. Get a good look at his face. He looks pretty dead, but it doesn't look like a zombified like Deidre was. It's Giles. Oh, he's alright, isn't he? I don't know. Oh, this is probably gonna ruin their Saturday night the plans. what he was supposed to last night. He seemed perfectly normal yesterday when I saw him talking to the police. <laughs> Delia. I didn't think it was important. We understand. It wasn't about you. What were the police talking to him about? Something about a homicide. That's it. I'm calling him right now. Oh, that's probably, um, Philip. I know you. Well, you were in that costume shop. Oh, I'm pleased you remember. Ethan. <laughs> Oh. Uh. You know Giles. We go back. You don't happen to know where he is, do you? Oh my god! Those nightmares he's having, were, are those memories? Because we just saw the tattoo in that flash. Was he... Did they do some sort of weird ritual when they were younger that, that, that did something to them? I'm in your office with someone who claims to be an old friend of yours. Ethan Rain. Is that with you? I'm not going anywhere until you give me some answers. That would be Philip. Ew, his little hunch. Don't let him get away! Oh, shoot. You oh, are nice. And also, did I see that right? Did Cordelia kick Ethan? Is everyone alright? Super. I kicked a guy. We're okay. I saw. That guy here interrupted our tutorial. Been having the dreams, I know. I have. We both know what's coming. What dreams? What is, is going on here? Their dreams are premonitions? Tell her, Ripper. How do you kill this thing? What? You kick him? How do- why and how? Where'd he go? Are you alright, Chitty? Is it bad that she touched that? It showed us a close-up of her touching that. Not the eyes flash. Oh my god. No. 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 I don't know. The last two zombified glow eye goo people have not met a very nice fate. And I do not want Calendar to meet that same... Oh no, the, jo the the show is doing it really well. It's doing it really well because I, I could see them getting her, getting, killing her. The stakes have been raised enough for me to believe that we might lose her and I want to be wrong. But I, I do have hope that we're going to figure this out. Xander, how do you feel about digging through some of Giles' personal files and seeing what you can find? I feel pretty good about it. Does that make me a sociopath? <laughs> <laughs> what about me? I care about Giles. Oh work with Xander. I'm not a very safe person to be around at the moment. Nothing's safe in mm -hmm. this world, Rupert. Look, the mark of Igon worn by his initiate. <gasps> Igon, also called the sleepwalker, can only exist in this reality by possessing an unconscious host. But its demonic energy soon disintegrates the host and it must jump to the nearest dead or unconscious person to continue living. I still don't get what this has oh. to do with Giles. There was no one dead to jump into. Unconscious. I mean, no dead. But someone unconscious. Okay, so it's not something that happens. I'm still trying to figure out how they, why they got the tattoo, and how that fits into like what they did when back in the day. I, I don't know yet. But I was afraid that they did some sort of ritual that caused them to turn into that in some sort of. I don't know. I, I I don't know. Um, but I'm happy to know that this is just like one being. Igon is transferring person to person to person rather than like living in all of them which was a concern of mine i guess oh i don't know let's see drink that and then i'll drive you home or or you could take advantage of me in my weakened state no now it's not the time is that igon talking what the heck now really isn't the right time oh there's never been a better time he said no no it's not her though it's not her it's it's not right. I would be taking advantage. God, you just don't change, do you? 
What? You never had the strength for me. You don't deserve me. Oh, you never had the stomach. But that's okay. Because I'm about to rip it out. Okay, oh, okay. I hate when this type of thing happens because we don't want to hurt Calendar, but we got to deal with Igon. Three down, two to go. Be seeing you. Right. So Igon is back and specifically targeting that group of people for whatever reason. I don't know. Three down, two to go. The two to go is Ethan and Giles, yeah? And now Calendar is possessed by Igon and just out on the loose. What have I done? Talk to me. Uh, yeah. Giles, I, you're scaring me. I'd be feeling so guilty, but it's not your don't fault. Be sorry, be Giles. And Ethan and I discovered something bigger. Igon. One of us would um, go into a deep sleep, and the others would uh, summon him. You couldn't control it. One of us, Randall. He lost control. Igon took him whole. We tried to exorcise the demon from Randall, but it killed him. And one by one, he will kill us all. Three down, two to go. Then it's going after Ethan. I better beat it there. We'd better. I'd better. I don't know how to stop it without killing Jenny. Got the guys working on it. So did they just get... I'm guessing they just all got those tattoos when they were messing around with magic in their early 20s and discovered Igon. I'm just trying to figure out if it's something... The tattoo's something more than that, but right now I think that's just what it was, was them being young and dumb and thinking it would be cool. Is there a way in through the back? Oh, there's a back door. It's locked. I think it's solid. We'll set up there. Oh my god. I hope you're not taking this personally, Buffy. I actually kind of like you. It's, ju it's just that I like myself a lot more. <laughs> taking my place with the demon, giving so oh. that others may live. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. You blow the whole karma thing. Sweet child. We have to figure out how to kill this thing and we need to do it fast. Ooh, ooh, bury a potato. What? No, that's for warts. Who <laughs> writes this stuff? To kill a demon, cut off its head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, find Miss Calendar, then we'll decapitate her. Hey, she'll be the first headless computer teacher in school. And if you two aren't with me 110%, then get the hell out of my library! We're sorry. I think I missed my calling as an artist. Ethan, listen to me. This is a bad idea. You're dealing with something very dangerous. <laughs> what is that? Acid? Oh! Okay, okay. The green backdrop, it's kind of cool. No! Oh my god. Telekinesis? Angel has really been coming through these last couple episodes. He's always there when we need him. Oh, unconscious, until they're unconscious, right? Now what though? Yeah, okay, now what? Okay, first of all, I want to say I just realized why it makes the beginning scene make sense and why Philip came back to life. He didn't come back to life. He was just he was just knocked unconscious, right? Cuz he was he was choked out by Deidre. Then he was knocked unconscious, but then why did the people think he was dead? Was it because of the demon inside him made him seem dead while he was dormant? I don't know, but um, what just happened? So Angel choked out Jenny. She went unconscious, so then uh, uh, Igon had to m get out of her body, went into Angel's because he's not technically alive, and then something happened. Like, was there a weird, weird reaction when he did that because Angel is a vampire? Did, I've, I'm not sure if this got rid of him, though. I don't know. I was saving up for some very important shoes. And now I have to blow my entire allowance to get this stupid tattoo removed. I wasn't sure it was going to work. <laughs> but it did. Like a charm. Hey, maybe you should consider a career as a watcher. Oh, hey. no. I don't think I could handle the stress. Rupert, hi. Uh. 
<laughs> the way that person just bounced up the stairs behind them. Wait, look at this. Watch this again. Uh, perhaps we could um, talk sometime. Um, dinner or a drink when you're feeling stronger. Sure, sometime. Oh no. Yeah, sometime. Mm, that is sad. I'm hoping we'll just give her time and hopefully she'll come back if they're meant to be, but... I don't think she'll ever really forgive me. She will. I think she will. Maybe she should. Maybe you should. I'm so used to you being the grown-up and then I find out that you're a person. Mm. <laughs> Most grown-ups are. Mm -hmm. After all this time, we finally find out that we do have something in common. Which, apart from being a little weird, is kind of okay. I think we're supposed to be training right now. Yes, yes. I have just the perfect music. Go on, say it. You know you want to. It's not music, it's just uh, meaningless sounds. There. That was a kind of a heavy episode, my goodness. Buffy having to face the fact that Giles is an actual person, not just an archetype of one that fits into her own life and the way that he chooses to usually present himself as, you know, her mentor. But that's an important thing to realize and understand in order to strengthen their relationship and their bond. And um, I think that their relationship and their bond is really important for obvious reasons to, to keep each other going strong through all of these hard times. So... I've been waiting for an episode like this, honestly, where where she sees him more as just stuffy mentor guy, I guess. Um, I mean, I know she's not she's always appreciated him and she goes to him and she can trust him and but this is just a really cool step in it in their relationship, I think, to see him more as like a person. And then also, yeah, him and calendar. <sighs> bummer we started out the episode so strong with them like stronger than ever and i thought they were officially gonna go for it and just go all in with each other and then this happened and she had a very real human reaction to being possessed by a demon that he got involved with in his youth i think it makes a lot of sense that she would need some time to herself after that, um, which I like because they've kind of shown her so far as like this impenetrable force who's not phased by anything because she chose to look into the supernatural world and is very interested in it, which is a big reason as to why her and Giles can work um, because I don't think that he would really get involved in a serious sense with somebody who didn't know of the supernatural world because it would just be too hard. And while it's cool that they've always shown her as like this very strong, intelligent woman, um, I think it's very important too that they showed that she's a person as well in this episode. And she does have those boundaries and those limits that can be pushed too far for her and cause her to retreat like she's doing now. Um, which is totally valid, and it's also really sad to see, especially because Giles already harbors so much guilt about his past without it even coming back to haunt him in this way, I think. Um, so for someone that he cares about to be caught up in it is really sad. This was a really sad episode. I'm sad now. Yeah, I wrote down, I'm not sure, I'm gonna say was that the end of Igon? That's crazy if it is. Like, these people, him and Ethan are still alive and they have, like, the tattoo of Igon. Why haven't they gotten it removed? Because Buffy said she was going to get hers removed. Which, of course, she is because, like, the show doesn't want her to have that on her if it's not some bigger story or purpose that's going to be told over the seasons. Um, but why haven't Ethan and Giles had it removed? And I wonder if that was actually the end of Igon. I still, can you explain to me what exactly happened when it went inside Angel? Like, did it just, it wasn't able to survive inside of him because he also has somewhat of a demon inside of him because he's a vampire? Is that what happened there? Like, in a war, like internal war literally went on inside his body and then Igor was defeated? That's kind of what I took from it. But if I'm missing something that I shouldn't be, uh, let me know. And yeah, I'm kind of surprised if that's the end of Igon. I'm slightly disappointed because it's such a big backstory for Giles and him and Ethan are still around and kicking and they have the tattoos on them. So I'm like, was that really it? Like, is there not more to the story? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it goes from here. Um, I'm definitely intrigued. And if that is the end of it, um, I'm happy we got to see more of 
of Giles's backstory, and I'm curious to see where they decide to go with Ethan from here. So yeah, I am going to leave it there for this episode. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below. If you want me to include that comment interactivity with you guys at the start of each reaction, let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.